I was reborn. Just in time for the fifth year of my marriage, when Clara claimed she had lost her memory, I only remember loving your brother Charles, she said, tears streaming down her face, her expression full of pain. My son also held my hand. Dad, don't blame mom. She just wants to care for uncle. He's such a good person. You wouldn't want to see him alone. Right. The system, as it did in the previous life, popped up. Host. It's okay if she's lost her memory. You succeeded last time, and you can do it again. Just conquer the infatuated second female lead and your son once more. I calmly lit a cigarette, took down the family photo of the three of us, and glanced at the picture of the villainous woman on my phone. System. I remember. I can change the target of my strategy. Right. Chapter 1. Huh. The system was stunned. You still have an unused opportunity to change the strategy target, but why change it? Clara just lost her memory. Besides, you and she already have a son, Samuel Fu. If you change the strategy target now, what will happen to him? No, no, I don't agree. Heh. Memory loss. In my previous life, I believed Clara's nonsense, trying everything to help her regain her memory and fall in love with me again. But instead, I witnessed her and Charles growing closer. I'm sorry. Maybe we had many wonderful memories, but I don't remember anything now. I only have feelings for Charles, no matter how hard I tried. She only felt sorry for me, like a stranger. She even wanted to negotiate a divorce with me. And our son Samuel, when I was in unbearable pain from not being able to restore Clara's memory, when I insisted on saving this marriage, he stood firmly by his mother's side. Dad, you always taught me to be helpful. Why are you angry when mom helps uncle? You're so selfish and annoying. Even my parents came to persuade me. Why put yourself through this? Clara loves your brother now. She can't remember you. Why are you holding on to this marriage? After all, Clara likes your brother. Even if you divorce her, Samuel is still part of the Fu family. It's okay if your brother becomes his father. We're still a family. Later, they began to blame me. Your brother is divorced. How pitiful. How can you not feel sorry for him? He and Clara are in love. But because you refuse to divorce, he has to bear the stigma of being a homewrecker. He's your brother. How can you be so selfish? Eventually, I became ill from long-term depression. When I went to the hospital, I saw Charles supporting Clara. She leaned lazily in his arms. Clara, maybe you should tell David that you were pretending to have amnesia. Charles caressed her slightly swollen belly. She hesitated. We've been married for five years. I'm afraid it'll hurt him too much. But he keeps dragging out the divorce. Your belly is getting bigger. You won't be able to hide it soon. And what about the baby? Should my child call David, Dad? So, Clara had never lost her memory. The so-called amnesia was just an excuse for her affair with Charles. And I, like a fool, thought she loved me and foolishly tried to restore her so-called memory. That day, I went back to an empty home and developed a high fever that night. I called Clara, Samuel, and my parents. But no one answered. They were all celebrating Charles's birthday. The chat group was filled with one joyful photo after another. I raised my hand and typed a few words into the group. I'm going to die. The group suddenly went silent. At that moment, Charles called. David, I know you've always held a grudge because our parents left you in the countryside for years to take care of my frail health when we were kids, but we're brothers. Did you intentionally skip my birthday party? Do you hate your brother that much? If he doesn't want to come, then don't. It's not like we're begging him. My father's voice came through the receiver, saying you're going to die. Who are you trying to disgust? Where did you even learn that from? My mother chimed in. Uncle, uncle, don't mind my dad. It's midnight. Come blow out the candles. Samuel's voice came through the phone. There was laughter on the other end of the line. And as the phone slowly slipped from my hand, I heard a mechanical voice. Host's side mission failed. Final mission failed. However, due to completing the marriage achievement and redeeming valid points, you have one chance to be reborn with the original system. The process will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2. So, this was just a side story. I finally understood. No wonder when I told the system I was willing to stay after the wedding. It said nothing more. It turns out I had never succeeded in the strategy, nor had I escaped the constraints of the plot. In the side story, the male lead divorces the original female lead and ends up with the infatuated second female lead who still loves him. And I, I was just the villain in the side story, the stumbling block in their path to love, the catalyst for their affection. I was someone no one would care about, even in death. Chapter 2. Just then, Clara and Samuel came back. As soon as he saw me, Samuel hurriedly stood in front of his mother. Dad. Please don't talk to mom about the past again today. She's exhausted. Yes. She was exhausted. Charles had officially finalized his divorce today. And she had taken Samuel to help clean and organize his new home. Thinking about this, I suddenly started laughing. Clara frowned slightly. David. What are you laughing at? Her gaze rested on the cigarette between my fingers. After all. 
I used to never smoke because she didn't like the smell, you know, Clara, I said, exhaling a slow puff of smoke. In the past, when I occasionally read novels, I thought the infatuated second female lead was quite endearing. But now that I think about it, there's nothing endearing about an infatuated second female lead, it's just a simp. I pointed at her, then at Samuel. I just never thought that the son of a female simp would also turn out to be a male simp. Apparently, it's hereditary. A simp. Samuel was confused. Dad, what are you talking about? How can you insult your own son like that? David, don't act like this just because I helped Charles today. Clara said impatiently. How can you be jealous of your own brother? Besides, I've been helping you search for memories every day. I just wanted a day off. There's no need for that anymore. I interrupted. What? I stubbed out the cigarette in water and handed her the divorce papers from the table. I've thought it through. If the memories are gone, they're gone. It's no big deal. I've already drafted the divorce papers. And I've also found my next partner recently. Let's do each other a favor and get divorced. What are you saying? Clara was stunned. Host. Host. Calm down. You can't handle Misty. That villainous. She's a yandera. You can't change the target of your strategy. The system exclaimed. Yes. I'm specifically looking for a villainous. I smiled at the system. Otherwise, who would help me? The villainous male side character. Take down the Zhao family and the Fu family. You mean? Clara couldn't believe it. You have. A next partner. She stared at me, dumbfounded, and blurted out. Impossible. Chapter 3. Yes. To Clara. This was, of course, impossible. Clara was Charles's simp. And in the past, wasn't I just Clara's simp? I put her first in everything. Stayed by her side when she was down. Took care of her when she was unwell and even stayed awake for days to care for her when she had a fever. David, can you stop this nonsense? Clara said with a dark expression, throwing the divorce papers back on the table. I told you, I have amnesia now. Whether you're pretending to want a divorce or making up a new partner to make me jealous, it won't work. There's nothing in my heart now. The Zhao Corporation was built up by the two of us after marriage. I want 30% of the shares, and I don't want custody of the child. I said expressionlessly as I walked to the door. As soon as you sign, we can go to the Civil Affairs Bureau right away. She froze again. What does divorce mean? Is uncle going to be my dad now? Samuel asked blankly. I ignored the two of them, opened the door, and walked out. Host, what on earth are you doing? Clara just lost her memory. She still has feelings for you. You're hurting her so much by doing this. The system kept chattering in my ear. System, do you think I should clean up and head to the Moo Corporation? What? Where are you going? No way. You absolutely must not go to the villainous you'll regret it. Beep. I used 20 points to mute the system. Too noisy. I bought a new outfit and changed into it, then got a new hairstyle. Sir, you look very handsome today. Are you planning something special with your wife? The hairstylist knew me and asked with a smile. Yes, I'm planning to cheat, I replied, satisfied with my reflection in the mirror. Ha ha. Sir, you have such a sense of humor. After some thought, I didn't drive my own car but instead took a taxi to the Moo Corporation building. Who are you here to see? Do you have an appointment? The receptionist asked when she saw me. Could you please let Ms. Mu know? I said with a smile. That David is here to deliver a special gift. Chapter 4. Mu Corporation CEO's Office. This office of yours is quite spacious. Mu. But it's a bit empty. I said. Sitting on the sofa and looking around. Mr. Fu. My time is rather precious. Misty Mu replied from behind her desk. Her beautiful face tinged with a hint of annoyance. I know. You're busy competing with the Zhao Corporation. Aren't you? I smiled. But what if I told you that I'm willing to come over and join you? Would you take me in? She paused for a moment, then suddenly laughed. I've heard that Mr. Fu has deep feelings for Ms. Zhao. Back then, you even merged your design company into Zhao Corporation to save it. I never expected that now. For the sake of Zhao Corporation, you'd be willing to offer yourself as bait to my Mu Corporation. She stood up and walked closer, tilting her head and leaning forward. But it's very dangerous here. Aren't you afraid that once you enter the enemy's stronghold alone, you won't be able to get out? and you'll be devoured with nothing left. Our eyes met, and there was silence for a moment. I burst out laughing. I'm not afraid. Since you know I'm the kind of man who would do anything for his wife, why not marry me? After all, you know that a man like me, who uses his love-struck mind as a dowry, is willing to sacrifice everything for his loved one. Besides, the design team I have is still pretty good. She didn't say anything, but I knew she was intrigued, not by me, but by the resources I held. In fact, Misty and I were quite familiar with each other. The Mu Corporation, under her control, was Zhao Corporation's competitor and had caused Clara no small amount of trouble in the business world. When Clara took over Zhao Corporation, it was already on the verge of bankruptcy due to Misty's machinations, and the first stroke of luck that revived it was thanks to the men's fashion line I designed. Later, to help Clara, 
I foolishly dissolved my design company and merged its staff into Zhao Corporation. Over the years, Zhao Corporation and Mu Corporation had clashed several times, with victories on both sides, and Misty was the person Clara despised the most. After a while, Misty straightened up. Mr. Fu, you are indeed quite handsome, but I'm not desperate, and I have no interest in married men. What if I divorce Clara? I stepped closer, looking her in the eye. She was slightly taken aback. Oh, well, that would be a different story. She smiled. But Mr. Fu, you should know. I, Misty, do not tolerate betrayal. She said as she reached up, grabbed my tie with both hands, and smiled seductively. In my view, marriage is indeed a binding contract. But if you want to marry me, you'd better show some sincerity. 30% of Zhao Corporation's shares and my design team, I'll give them all to you. I smiled. Can you handle it, Miss Mu? Chapter 5 Misty agreed to my terms. In the days that followed, I simply moved out of the house and started making preparations for life after the divorce. Clara and Samuel didn't come looking for me. They were probably too busy enjoying their time with Charles. One day, I went back to pick up some design drafts I had forgotten. As soon as I opened the door, I found the place bustling with activity. Samuel was crying in Charles's arms. My parents were fuming with anger, and Clara looked unhappy. You actually have the nerve to come back. Who knows where you've been off gallivanting. My father immediately started berating me as soon as he saw me. Not taking care of your child. Not taking care of your wife. How did I end up raising a son like you? If Charles hadn't been helping out lately, we wouldn't even know that Samuel was being bullied at the kindergarten. What kind of father are you? Turning your back on your own family? I frowned. Charles quickly stepped forward. David, it's not like I want to scold you. But when Samuel was being bullied at kindergarten, how could you make him apologize first? That must have left a deep scar on his heart. Why shouldn't he apologize when he was the one in the wrong? He called another kid a poor loser and insulted their parents. That's why the other kid hit him. And he didn't even lose out, he ended up breaking the other kid's nose. I replied. He didn't lose out. Charles's voice was still gentle. I've been picking him up for Clara these past few days. And he's been so downcast. But it doesn't matter now. I paid the other family. And they agreed to have their child apologize to Samuel. What? I was stunned. Don't you think that's unfair to the other child? He's the real victim here. And now his parents have to make him apologize just because they took the money. He should apologize to me. You're biased. Bad guy. You're not my dad. I want a different dad. Samuel rushed at me. Ready to hit me. But Charles held him back. See. The kid's heartbroken. Charles said as he knelt down and wiped away the two tears Samuel had forced out. I was speechless. Do you really think this is good for him? Enough. We all agree with what Charles did. My father said as he walked over. His voice stern. You didn't grow up with us. And that's our fault for not raising you properly. Which is why you turned out to be such an irresponsible husband and father. If you can't raise your child properly, then let Charles do it. He's clearly much more competent than you. I couldn't help but laugh. Couldn't wait. Could they? I turned to Clara. And you, do you agree with them? This issue is already in the past. She said as she stood up. Stop dragging it out. Enough. I let out a long breath. Clara, have you signed the divorce papers? Divorce papers? What papers? Charles seemed unaware of this. But then his eyes widened, and he quickly ran to the table and grabbed the divorce agreement. David, you're getting a divorce, and you want 30% of Zhao Corporation's shares? He stared at me, incredulous. Don't you think? That's too much. How can you be so greedy? Too much, greedy. I looked at him. When Clara and I got married, Zhao Corporation was on the brink of bankruptcy. It was my men's fashion designs that brought it back to life, and I built the current design team. How am I not entitled to 30% of the shares? A big company like Zhao Corporation can't survive on just a few designers. The success of Zhao Corporation is due to Clara's hard work. She's been through so much as a woman to get where she is. And you shamelessly claim it was all you're doing. Absent from home, seeking a divorce, and demanding money from your wife, it's a disgrace to the Fu family to have a son like you. My father added angrily, you didn't see all the work I've put in over the years. So what right do you have to say I don't deserve it? Clara is allergic to alcohol. And who else but me attended all those drinking parties to close big deals. From strategy to planning. From design to production. Which part of the business haven't I overseen personally? And what exactly has Clara done? David. Are you really going to nitpick with your own wife? Are you still a man? Charles moved closer to Clara. Who had started to look guilty. And pulled her into his arms. Clara immediately leaned into his embrace. Sobbing. I felt nothing but cold disdain and sneered. If I'm not a man. Then are any of you even human? You think you can kick me out and enjoy the spoils? Even have a loyal lapdog son to boot. But don't forget, water can carry a boat, but it can also sink it. Enough. Clara suddenly shouted. Everyone fell silent. David, even though I don't remember you, 
We were still married. There's no need to be so cruel with your words, she said. Her eyes read. Zhao Corporation is my life's work. I can't agree to 30%. I suddenly started laughing. Are you sure? If you're willing to negotiate, I can offer you some financial compensation. Keep your money to hand out to beggars. I looked at her. Clara, I hope you won't regret this. With that, I found the design drafts I needed, slammed the door, and left. I never wanted to see anyone in that house again. It was raining outside, and I didn't have an umbrella. See, I told you not to cause trouble. Now how are you going to fix this? It'll be even harder to get Clara to forgive you. The system kept nagging. Quiet for a moment. I found a bench and sat down, reaching out to catch the rain. Water can carry a boat, but it can also sink it. I wasn't just making idle threats. This time, I was determined to teach those disgusting people the meaning of the word regret. But if I kept fighting for the 30% shares, it would inevitably turn into a long, drawn-out legal battle. Wasting too much time. Starting from scratch wasn't impossible. But Clara and Charles would definitely try to crush me. It would be best to leverage Moo Corporation. But without the 30% shares, would Misty still agree to team up with me? Looks like Mr. Fu's road to divorce isn't going too smoothly. Suddenly, an umbrella appeared over my head. I looked up and was surprised to see Misty. She stood there holding the umbrella, smiling down at me. She's been following you, that wicked woman. The system started screaming again. Mr. Fu looks so pitiful, like a little puppy caught in the rain. She shifted the umbrella to cover me. Getting the 30% shares might take a long time, but I've changed my mind. I want to bring Zhao Corporation down as soon as possible. I decided to be honest. I'm confident I can help you win, but it's up to you whether you trust me. She smiled, then suddenly crouched down, leaning in close. And what exactly do you have in mind? After all, Mr. Fu, you've already used the self-sacrifice tactic on me, and I'm a softy for that. You're so pitiful. I just want to take you home right now. I don't even want those 30% shares anymore. After all. It's more fun to watch your opponent go bankrupt and end up with nothing. She reached out her hand, intertwining her fingers with mine. Hurry up and get that divorce. I can't wait to marry you and watch Zhao Corporation crumble together. But David, if you ever betray me, she whispered in my ear, I'll make sure you go down with them. Chapter 6. Host. Don't act impulsively. Wait. 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 Bang. The door to the CEO's office at Zhao Corporation was flung open by me. Divorce. I slapped the new divorce agreement in front of Clara. She frowned. I'm not asking for the shares anymore. Can you sign now? What madness is this? She pinched the bridge of her nose. I told you. I've found someone new. And I'm in a hurry to get married. So we need to get divorced immediately. I said. Brushing her off. Just sign it. She suddenly smiled and slowly pulled out a stack of papers from a drawer. David. Your car's dashboard camera shows that you haven't been at home lately. You've only been going to the apartment you lived in before we got married. Your movements are so simple. So simple that. It's as if you have nowhere else to go. She closed the papers. Her gaze resolute. You don't have anyone new. All this fuss is just to get my attention by threatening divorce. I suddenly understood just how exasperated the person who coined the phrase, playing a lute to a cow, must have felt. I sat down and made a call to Charles. After his divorce, Clara had arranged for him to work at Zhao Corporation. Why are you calling him? I want him to join the conversation. Charles arrived quickly. As expected. David. What are you doing? Clara is very busy with work, and you already upset everyone at home last time. This is a company. You can't just act out whenever you please. Shut up and just listen. I cut him off. Clara. I turned to her with a smile. Now that everyone's here, tell me, are you hesitant to let me go? What? She was taken aback. You keep saying you've forgotten me and that you only remember Charles, but when I want to divorce you, you refuse. Isn't that because you can't bear to let me go? Do you not like Charles as much as you claim? Or is your amnesia fake? Do you actually remember everything about us? Which is why you won't sign the divorce papers. Right. I looked at Charles. What should I do? I had no idea she loved me so much. You, you shut up. Clara suddenly interrupted me. Clara. Even Charles seemed startled by her outburst. Her expression turned sour. As if I had struck a nerve. After a long pause. She spoke. David. I was only pitying you. I thought that since we were married and you had nowhere else to go. I didn't want to sign the papers out of kindness. I haven't remembered you. Nor do I have any attachment to you. To me. You're just a stranger. Do you really want a divorce? Fine. I'll grant you that. She waved her hand and angrily signed her name on the agreement. But don't come to regret this. Chapter 7. Afraid that Clara might change her mind. I dragged her to the Civil Affairs Bureau right after signing the papers. Pick up the divorce certificate in a month. Don't be late. She gave me a cold look and left. What is she so angry about? Wasn't she the one who was so desperate for a divorce in our previous life? I muttered as I watched her walk away. What previous life? The system asked. Puzzled. Oh. I forgot. This system doesn't have memories of the previous life. A few days later. 
Misty called and asked me to meet her at a specific location. I went, only to find that it was the Mu Corporation's haute couture shop. Good day, Mr. Fu, MS. Mu specifically instructed us that you shouldn't embarrass her at the wedding. Please take a look at the options or let us know your design preferences, and we'll assist you. When I married Clara, I wore a black suit because it was what she liked, and I wanted to make her happy. But in truth, I prefer white suits. This time, I decided to please myself and design my own wedding outfit. I spent the entire afternoon trying on clothes, taking measurements, and sketching designs. Then I sent the design to Misty. You like white suits? So do I. She replied quickly. By the way, design a wedding dress for me too. She said, to be honest, Misty is quite beautiful. I imagined that she would look like a princess in a wedding dress. Just then, my phone rang. I thought it was Misty. So I answered without hesitation. Samuel has a fever. Come home right now. Came Clara's voice. I took a deep breath, forcing myself to stay calm. We're divorced. Samuel is your responsibility now. You're his mother. Can't you take care of him? David. How can you be so cold-blooded? The child is in pain. And you're saying such heartless things. It was Charles. Good. He's there. That makes things easier. I can't come. I said. Forcing patience. Brother. Don't you love Samuel the most? Let me tell you. When he's sick. You need to hold him all night like a baby. Singing lullabies to him. And you have to take his temperature every half hour. Oh. And he has a hard time taking medicine. He'll purposely spit it out everywhere. But that's okay. Just mix more doses and give him multiple baths. I have no experience with this. Why are you telling me all this? You're his father. You should be the one taking care of him. Samu. Samu. Don't spit on your uncle. Charles. I said coldly. Do you think raising a child is about giving him candy in secret? Indulging him. Spoiling him. And enjoying his sweet words? It's not. Raising a child means sleepless nights. Caring for him over and over. Endlessly repeating tasks. And being so busy you don't even have time to go to the bathroom. Eat. Or sleep. If you want to be Samuel's father. You have to do all of this. David. The child is suffering. Crying out for his father. And you still want to argue about these trivial things. Clara's voice was full of anger. Of course she's angry. I've always taken care of Samuel when he's sick. And she's long been used to it. I told you I'm busy. What exactly are you busy with? Mr. Fu, do these cufflinks match your outfit for the wedding? A shop assistant approached me with a smile. The other end of the line fell silent. What are you doing? Clara's voice was filled with disbelief. I told her, enunciating every word, I'm preparing for my wedding. Chapter 8. In the days that followed, Clara didn't call me again. Meanwhile, Misty and I were busy preparing for the wedding and discussing the next steps for Moo Corporation's clothing design and marketing strategy. The excitement of exploring new territories invigorated me, with new ideas constantly popping into my head and Misty being a workaholic. We often found ourselves talking late into the night. I discovered many admirable qualities in her. For instance, she's serious, sincere, and hardworking. How did such a good girl end up becoming a villain? A month later, Clara and I agreed to meet at the Civil Affairs Bureau to finalize the divorce. Do you really have someone new? She asked, staring at me outside the bureau. Yes, I replied. Don't you feel guilty for betraying our marriage? She suddenly asked. I couldn't help but laugh. No, not at all. After all, you don't remember anything except Charles, right? I shrugged. Since you've forgotten, why should I still hold on? We might as well both move on. It's refreshing. I actually. Clara. Charles suddenly appeared, jogging over and affectionately taking Clara's hand. Are you done? Samuel and I are waiting for you to join us for dinner. Not yet. Let's hurry up then, I said taking the lead and walking into the Civil Affairs Bureau. Are you both sure about this? The clerk asked. Yes, I said. Clara, however, remained silent. Ma'am. David. She suddenly turned to me. Are you really sure? Once we sign, we'll have nothing to do with each other anymore. I sighed. Can you stop stalling? Charles is waiting for you outside. Sis, I just want to know. She continued as if speaking to herself. You're so quick to divorce. Does five years of marriage really mean nothing to you? We even have a child, am I, Clara, really so unworthy of your affection? I quietly looked at the woman I had loved for so many years. In our previous life, I didn't want a divorce, and she found me clingy. In this life, I'm the one initiating the divorce, and now she finds me too indifferent. So the protagonists get to have it both ways. Huh. It's not that. The past five years have been very valuable to me. She suddenly lifted her head, a flicker of light seeming to pass through her eyes. After all. It took me five years to learn a valuable lesson. Simps never have a good ending. I patted her shoulder, speaking earnestly. Let's both learn from this. Clara's face remained sullen even after we received the divorce certificate and walked out. Finally done. Huh? Was there a long line or something? Charles asked, holding her hand. It was fine. 
Just then, Clara's phone rang. She answered it, and her face changed drastically. David, she grabbed my arm. You made the entire design team resign. Yes, why? Why are you so tense? I smiled. Isn't Zhao Corporation built up by the hard work of Zhao herself? How much could losing one design team affect it? We were married. How could you burn bridges like this? Clara, calm down. I'm a designer too, remember? It's just one design team. I'll help you build another, Charles said, trying to soothe her. To my surprise, she pushed Charles's hand away. David, did you do this on purpose? We're about to launch our fall collection. And now, so noisy. What's the big deal? Ignoring her, I looked towards the street. Over here, I waved my arm toward a distant figure. Misty, over here. A Bugatti pulled up in front of me. Wearing sunglasses, Misty stepped out of the car, all set. Yes, Clara was visibly shocked. Misty, what are you doing here? Misty glanced at her and suddenly a mischievous glint appeared in her eyes. She delicately linked her arm through mine. I'm here to pick up my fiancé. Fiancé. Clara was stunned, looking at me. Him? Misty nestled herself into my chest, yawning. It's been a while, hasn't it? Zhao, are your eyes failing? You, David, how could you? She seemed to be so angry that she started coughing violently. Charles quickly supported her, trying to calm her down. Misty and I exchanged a look and got into the Bugatti. They seem really upset with you. Was it because of the design team resigning? Misty asked as we drove away. I nodded. And there's something else. She's probably going to lose it completely once she finds out. What's that? I sighed. I had the design team kill off her favorite money tree by the entrance before they left. Chapter 9 The news of my marriage to Misty quickly spread. Surprisingly, the most intense reaction came from my parents. You got divorced. Fine. But why is your new wife from Clara's rival family? Don't you know that the Fu family's business depends on the Zhao family? You need to come back and kneel to Clara and apologize. We don't have a son like you. If you don't come back, we'll cut ties with you. So, as they wished, I brought the disownment papers and showed up at their door. I was accompanied by bodyguards. Mr. Fu, Mrs. Fu, just sign here, and we will officially sever our parent-child relationship. I said with an innocent smile. After all, they weren't really my parents anyway. My mother clutched her chest, wailing about her misfortune. While my father, fuming with anger, signed the papers, we should never have taken you back. Do you think marrying that Misty will bring you any glory? She's just an illegitimate daughter of the Mu family, enjoying temporary success but never destined for greatness. When the two of you are kicked out, the Fu family won't take you back. Dad's a traitor. Samuel suddenly appeared, holding a toy gun, and began shooting at me with it. Sorry, kid, but I'm not your dad anymore. With that, I signaled the bodyguards to take the toy gun away and toss it aside then turned to leave, he started wailing behind me, on the day of the wedding, I wore the white suit I had designed for myself, and Misty looked stunning in her mermaid gown, before we went on stage, Misty asked what I was thinking, I said, I used to genuinely want to be good to everyone, but now I realize that making myself happy is more satisfying, Misty nodded, when dealing with disgusting people, just stop thinking of them as human, after all, they don't behave like people, I agreed wholeheartedly, feeling like I'd found a kindred spirit, the wedding was grand, spectacular, and full of joy, except for that night, when I was woken up by a phone call in the middle of the night. David, I don't understand. What does Misty have that I don't? Clara's voice slurred on the other end. Clearly drunk. Of all the people you could choose, why Misty? What is she? She's nothing compared to me. Clara. I hung up the phone without a word. The next time I saw Clara was at a business reception. Misty was holding onto my arm, and Charles was leading Clara. It was a harmonious scene but Clara deliberately came over to pick a fight. I've always wanted to ask, M.S. Moo, what trick did you use to deceive David? Misty smiled. You're joking, M.S. Zhao. We're legally married. Whether it was the word legally or married, something seemed to snap in Clara. She suddenly disregarded the setting and blurted out, then you must know that David and I were deeply in love for the past five years, and we have a lovely son together, right? Aren't you supposed to have amnesia, M.S. Zhao? How do you remember being in love? Misty smiled. If he was so happy with you, why would David have divorced you the moment you lost your memory? You. Clara clenched her fist in anger. He was happy with me. How would you know if I was happy? Weren't you supposed to have amnesia? I said, growing impatient, tilting my neck slightly, just enough to reveal a small red mark. After all, Misty had been quite enthusiastic the night before, and things got a bit out of hand. Clara's eyes immediately reddened when she saw it. Ready to leave, Misty asked me. Yes, David. You've been deceived, you know that. She's just a green tea, a despicable woman. M.S. Zhao. I turned back, my voice icy. We're not that close, so please don't disrespect my wife. Also, 
Do me a favor and call me Mr. Fu from now on. With that, I turned to leave, but just then, Clara, ignoring Charles's attempts to hold her back, charged at Misty with red eyes, aiming to pull her hair. Misty, you stole my husband, you despicable woman. The crowd erupted in shock, forming a circle around them in an instant. I was about to step in, but Misty caught Clara's feeble hand mid-swipe. She even twisted it into a painful lock. I sighed. Misty had trained in martial arts. Clara was really asking for it. Amid Clara's ow, ow, cries, I heard Misty's voice, tinged with amusement. Ms. Zhao. Instead of behaving like a romance novel heroine by crying and making a scene, wouldn't it be better to worry about the fate of Zhao Corporation? Chapter 10. I think Misty is really a good person. Even in a situation like this, she doesn't forget to remind her opponent. After the commotion ended, Misty and I drove home. She was dozing off. I hesitated, then said, tonight, not tonight. Her face flushed immediately. I was talking about discussing the autumn launch plan tonight. Oh, work, that's fine. She perked up instantly. I sighed. Yes, although Misty and I have a relationship that might resemble a contract marriage. Honesty is our principle, and it's also our way of getting along. On our first night after the wedding, while I was still hesitating, thinking she might need a separate bed and hadn't yet asked her, she simply pulled me into bed. What married couple sleeps separately? I didn't marry a good-looking statue. Since then, we did everything a married couple should do, and overall, we just focused on not draining each other's energy and living happily together. After that reception, I didn't see Clara for a long time. Three months later, our autumn launch was a huge success, and for the first time, Mu Corporation's market share in October surpassed Zhao Corporation's. Then, in November, Zhao Corporation suddenly launched the Heartfelt menswear collection, with the new chief designer Charles as the lead designer. The Heartfelt series received great acclaim immediately upon release, and Charles even appeared on TV for an interview. Facing the camera, he spoke eloquently. The Heartfelt series is inspired by my understanding of love. The logo design concept represents two hearts closely connected. As soon as I saw it, I recognized it as the design draft I had casually created for a small foreign clothing manufacturer before I married Clara. Where did he dig that up from? I called that small clothing manufacturer, and they were both surprised and delighted, immediately initiating the legal process to protect their rights. A month later, the entire Heartfelt series was taken off the shelves, and Zhao Corporation found itself embroiled in a plagiarism lawsuit. Misty, being very kind, lent her most capable lawyer to the small clothing manufacturer free of charge. It was around this time that I received a call from my father. Your brother was ruined by your old design draft. Why did you give him that draft? I was baffled. You need to come testify in court and say that you gave your brother permission to use the draft. I hung up on them and immediately added them to the blacklist. After this incident, Zhao Corporation suffered significant damage. I heard that Clara was particularly angry about Charles's plagiarism, and the two of them fell into a cold war. Perhaps feeling insecure, Charles, during a drunken night, tried to take advantage of Clara while sending her back to her room, intending to get her pregnant. To avoid being disturbed by Samuel, he gave Clara's phone to Samuel to play with. But Samuel knew the phone's password, and while playing his pretend CEO game, he accidentally opened the company's video conference. He ended up live streaming how Charles drugged Clara and everything that followed. The video quickly spread across the internet, becoming a subject of public curiosity and a joke at dinner tables. After sobering up, Clara had a huge argument with Charles and cut off all business relations with the Fu family. Chapter 11 In the days that followed, the tacit understanding between Misty and me only grew stronger. Sometimes, I would look up from my work halfway through drawing, and she would know I wanted a drink of water. Under the combined pressure from Misty and me, Zhao Corporation soon fell apart, their core design team left, other departments were demoralized, and they lost several major contracts. A year later, at the spring new product launch, I, as Mu Corporation's chief designer, took the stage to introduce my design concept. This time, the theme is self-pleasure. People always pursue what they like, but more importantly, they should seek to make themselves happy. So, we hope that the first person everyone loves is themselves. Never waste time on people or things that aren't worth it and always believe that you deserve better. Just like myself, I once doubted, felt lost, and suffered. But after remarrying and having a wife I love very much, I'm living a very happy life. I hope all men can be stronger and brave enough to move forward and seek their own happiness. The launch was very successful, with sales reaching a new high that night. That evening, I was holding a glass of wine, resting my eyes, when Misty suddenly burrowed into my arms like a little rabbit. Back already? Yes. I opened my eyes and met her bright gaze. Mr. Fu, you gave a brilliant presentation at the launch. She nuzzled my nose. Of course, remarrying and having a wife you love very much, 
Living a happy life. I smiled and hugged her tightly. What? Can't I compliment you? She laughed softly. Today, I suddenly feel. She murmured as she wrapped her arms around my waist. You're too dazzling. I feel like I want to lock you up. So only I can see you. What should I do? The long silent system suddenly popped up. See. See. I told you she's a Yandera. She'll want to imprison you. Monopolize you. And you won't be happy with her. With a wave of my hand and 20 points, I muted the system again. At this moment, Misty was removing my tie, clumsily wrapping it around my hands. Her serious expression made me laugh. How did I not notice such an adorable girl in my previous life? Dangerous yet charming, honest yet passionate, I took the tie from her hands. Huh? She was puzzled. How did you untie it? That's not important. I lifted my hand, using the tie to blindfold her, and planted a light kiss on her earlobe. I know you like it this way. Chapter 12 Zhao Corporation's performance plummeted. Charles began posting long-winded complaints online, a grown man whining daily about how Clara had ruined his marriage and then abandoned him. Clara, in turn, accused Charles of deliberately seducing her after his divorce, claiming that he was the one who ruined her marriage and damaged her reputation. The two of them argued endlessly on social media. Meanwhile, my father and mother, devastated by the collapse of the Fu family business, blamed Clara entirely. They constantly caused a scene at Zhao Corporation accusing Clara of destroying Charles's marriage and now refusing to take responsibility for him. Clara, fed up, shouted back at them, what kind of responsibility do I owe him? He ruined my reputation. Everyone saw it. Eventually, unable to take it anymore, Clara tried to escape from Charles and my parents by jumping off a second floor balcony, accidentally breaking her leg in the process. That night, I was half asleep when I received a call from an unknown number. The person on the other end seemed drunk, mumbling, David. I actually remember everything. Why didn't I cherish you? I regret it so much. Misty was woken up by the call. Who is it? I hung up the phone. Just a prank call. A few days later, another call came. It was from my father. David, your birthday is coming up. Your mom and I have made some delicious dishes for you. Come home, and we can celebrate as a family. Oh, and bring Misty too. I replied calmly. Would you like me to send you another copy of the disownment papers? Then I hung up the phone. Misty glanced at me. You've been getting a lot of prank calls lately. I sighed and added the number to my blacklist. One day, Misty and I were passing by Samuel's kindergarten and saw him being bullied by some older kids. Hey, isn't this the rich Samuel? Why is he picking up trash now? Samuel started crying loudly. My dad is the boss of Moo Corporation. Foo, he's very rich. Don't underestimate me. I'll have my dad come and beat you all up. Should we intervene? Misty asked me. I shook my head. Let's go. Moo Corporation's clothing business continued to grow. One day, a colleague from the public relations department informed me that someone was selling counterfeit goods under the name of Moo Corporation in a live stream. Just as I was wondering who would dare do such a thing, I discovered that the live stream was being managed by none other than Charles, with my parents as the hosts, were the parents of David, the chief designer of Moo Corporation. They were shamelessly showing off my childhood photos, so we can offer these special prices to our loyal customers. Misty asked how I wanted to handle it. Proceed with legal action, demand compensation, and let the law take its course. No settlements. The live stream was quickly shut down, and our lawyer filed a lawsuit. David, how could you treat your parents like this? Where's your conscience? A few days later, they showed up at Moo Corporation's entrance with Charles, causing a scene. I was tired of it, so I called the police. Later, all three were detained for public disturbance, and they still had the lawsuit and compensation to deal with. That day, I came home a bit earlier than Misty with a good bottle of wine. Why are you hiding in the closet? The system asked, puzzled, for fun, to surprise her. I gently closed the closet door. Aren't you two getting a bit too creative? You never repeat anything. The system scoffed. One more word and I'll mute you. That's not how you're supposed to use points. It protested. Shut up. Just then, Misty returned, and I fell silent, peeking at her through the crack in the door. She was standing by the floor-to-ceiling window with her back to me. What's wrong? You're just staring at her. Do you like her that much? The system clicked its tongue. I was about to tell it to be quiet when I suddenly heard Misty speaking. I froze. Because she said, System, am I about to succeed? Chapter 13 I was stunned on the spot. I couldn't hear the response from Misty's system, but from her words, I realized that Misty was also a host in a strategy game. However, her success condition was to defeat Moo Corporation's competitor, Zhao Corporation, and drive it to bankruptcy. System, did you know all along that she was also a host? Is that why you wouldn't let me target her? My system stammered and didn't answer. No wonder. In the original setup, Misty and I were, in a way, locked in a zero-sum game. If I succeeded in winning Clara back and living a happy life with her, 
Zhao Corporation would likely not fall with my support. Likewise, if Misty managed to topple Zhao Corporation, Clara's pride wouldn't allow her to live a poor life with me, and my strategy would most likely end in failure. We were both supposed to win only at the other's expense. But now, I suddenly opened the closet door. David, Misty immediately turned around. Surprised, you, meeting her slightly bewildered gaze. I smiled and raised the bottle of wine in my hand. I heard everything. Congratulations on your success. Let me explain. She suddenly looked flustered. No need. Because I'm also one. What? She was stunned. I smiled. Tonight, we should have a long talk. Chapter 14. Misty told me that in her original world, her mother was falsely accused and forced to divorce. To ensure that Misty received the best education, her mother worked multiple jobs and eventually succumbed to illness due to overwork. After growing up, Misty returned to the Mu family and fought for power against her half-brother ultimately defeating everyone and becoming the head of Mu Corporation. She even managed to send the stepmother who had wronged her mother to prison, but she herself collapsed from exhaustion and fell into a coma. Perhaps it was because of the strong unwillingness I felt that the system came to me. Asking if I was willing to come to this world as a strategy player, she turned her head and noticed my expression. David, what's wrong? I shook my head. It's nothing. I just thought of my father in my original world. Coincidentally, I also grew up in a single-parent household and my father sacrificed a lot for me when I was young. Later, he met someone, but her family didn't agree to her being with a man who already had a child. Knowing he liked her, I didn't want him to give up his happiness because of me, so I left him voluntarily, only sending him occasional holiday greetings to let him know I was okay. Eventually, he got married, had more children, and I secretly checked in on him. Seeing him live well made me happy. I haven't contacted him in a long time. Luckily, he doesn't know about my illness. Misty put down her wine glass and hugged me. Having you as his son, he must be very happy. At that moment, Misty's phone pinged with a new message. Zhao Corporation has officially declared bankruptcy. Misty's strategy was a success. Chapter 15. Misty asked me what my strategy target was. I didn't tell her the truth. I've actually already succeeded in my strategy, but I've decided to stay here because I like it here. I said. The system seemed confused. What's the point of telling her? I smiled. The fact that I haven't succeeded yet means that in her heart, I'm not the most important person. This isn't something that can be achieved just because she pities me, but maybe it could increase your chances. I shook my head. System, I don't want to beg anyone for love anymore. A few days later, Misty's system urged her to claim her reward and return to her original world. She came to discuss it with me. I agree. I nodded. You've been here long enough. If you don't go back soon, you might lose everything you worked so hard for, but I'm worried about you. She said looking at me, what's there to worry about? I shrugged, you're leaving me with such a big company, I won't be able to spend all this money in my lifetime, I'm more than happy, is this really what you want? I nodded, yes, I'm absolutely sure. So, she transferred the company to me and bought a ticket to leave the country. On the day she left, it started to rain lightly, I didn't go to see her off. Once she leaves, you'll have officially failed your strategy, the system said in my ear. Yes, you see, I told you not to choose her, there's no good ending but you wouldn't listen. I laughed. System, you know what? This time here has been the best I've ever had in this world. I didn't have to be anyone's simp. Didn't need anyone's approval to feel good about myself. I could do whatever I wanted. Never compromising. Taking revenge when I felt like it. And enjoying life when I wanted to. I think it was worth it. The system sighed. Actually, I secretly checked the data. You were really close with Misty. Maybe I could try to get approval for you to stay in this world. But you'd have to take on a new identity and you wouldn't be able to keep your wealth or anything. Sure. Thanks. Looking up, I noticed the rain was getting heavier. Ah, I didn't bring an umbrella. Oh well, getting wet isn't so bad. After all, there isn't much time left. I just sat there on the park bench, tilting my head back, eyes closed, letting the rain run down my hair. Suddenly, an umbrella was held over my head. I opened my eyes. The girl who was supposed to be on the plane was standing in front of me with an umbrella. I stared at her in disbelief. Why are you? Right before boarding, I noticed it was raining, she said, holding the umbrella. I figured you might not have brought an umbrella, so I came back. See, I guessed right. I just like getting wet in the rain, I said stubbornly. Aren't you going to miss your flight? Her eyes suddenly turned red. David, it's rare to meet someone you really like in a lifetime. She sat down beside me and sighed. Today, as I was looking at the rain, I couldn't bear the thought that some other sneaky woman might come along and hold an umbrella for you. So, she tilted her head. I guess I'd better stay and keep an eye on you. I was stunned. What are you talking about? In your original world, you fought so hard to achieve all those things, your career, your success, are you going to give it all up? Yes. She nodded. I'm giving it all up. Those things, 
now that I think about it, don't seem so important anymore. Compared to all that, seeing you makes me happier. Are you crazy? This is just love brain. You know that. Aren't you love brain too? She said softly. So, aren't we a perfect match? Bang. The streetlight suddenly went out. In the darkness, a warm kiss touched my lips. I was held tightly. And just then, a strange voice suddenly spoke from above. Congratulations, host, on successfully completing the strategy of conquering the villainous. Chapter 16. Misty and I were finally ready to return home. We handed over Moo Corporation to her sister, who had just returned to this world, and together, we boarded a plane to leave the country. On our last day in this world, we embraced each other in the snow, watching the stunning northern lights in the distance. As a shooting star streaked across the sky, a familiar voice emerged from the aurora. I am the system deity. Congratulations to both strategy players. Now, I will activate the time-space tunnel to return you both to your original worlds, with fully restored and healthy bodies. And David, because you chose a strategy player as your target, increasing the difficulty, you are eligible for an additional reward. What would you like to exchange your points for? System deity, I looked up at the sky, I've always had a question, go ahead. On the day I was reborn, I heard your voice saying that I was reborn because I had achieved a marriage milestone and exchanged points. But at that time, I shouldn't have had any points. I want to know, where did the points that allowed me to be reborn come from? The system deity seemed to pause for a moment. They came from your father in your original world, it finally said. Not long after you fell into a coma, your father discovered it and stayed by your side in the hospital. When your body in this world was about to be erased, your original body also experienced acute failure. Your father dreamed about your failure in the strategy and knelt down, praying to exchange 10 years of his own life for a second chance for you. My tears burst forth almost instantly. It was my father. It was my father. The father who had always loved me and never gave up on me. Can I exchange all my points to extend my father's life? I choked out. Of course you can. You can increase his life by 20 years. Misty hugged me tightly. David, let's go home. Back to see your father. That night, under the brilliant northern lights, Misty and I held hands and went home together. Chapter 17. Doctor. Doctor. Come quickly. My son moved. He moved. When I opened my eyes again, I was lying in a hospital bed. Beside me was my father, who had been watching over me. David. It's dad. Dad's been here the whole time. Dad. I reached up, grasping his rough hand, and smiled softly. I'm back. He nodded vigorously, tears streaming down his face. Next came a series of medical examinations. A miracle. It's a real miracle. His body is perfectly fine. The doctor marveled. A nearby nurse giggled. I told you our hospital has good feng shui. The lady in the VIP room just woke up too. You mean the female CEO from the city's wealthiest family? Exactly. Everyone said there was no hope that she was only surviving on a ventilator. And then she suddenly got better. But it seems her mind isn't working quite right yet. I heard she's having the Moo family search the whole city for someone named Dave. No one knows if it's an enemy or something else. Wait, what name did you say she's looking for? I asked, stunned. Mr. Fu, your name sounds pretty close, doesn't it? The nurse leaned in with a mischievous grin. You'd better not get mistaken for someone else. Where's the VIP room? I asked urgently, grabbing the nurse's arm. 16 th floor. I jumped out of bed immediately. Hey, Mr. Fu, your shoes. I rushed to the 16th floor in the elevator. At the end of the hallway was the VIP room, and I pushed the door open. There were quite a few people in the room, but Misty wasn't among them. The bed in the distance was empty. Excuse me, sir, who are you looking for? Someone asked. I might be in the wrong place. He's David. A familiar voice suddenly said from behind me. I turned around abruptly. She was standing right there behind me. Dressed in a hospital gown, thinner than before but still just as beautiful, our eyes met, and we both smiled. I walked closer and pulled her into a tight embrace. David, she whispered in my ear, at our wedding here, will you still wear a white suit? 